Welcome tonight to our TMBT Media uh, Miami podcast. Uh, we're blessed tonight to be here uh, with two of our TMBT pro players, um, Levert Bristol and Xavier Fletcher, who both attended our TMBT Miami event. Uh, also tonight, we are uh, blessed to have Coach Donovan Carter, um, uh, who is from Miami, uh, who has been spearheading this project for the past three years. Um, um, Coach Carter, are you there, my brother? Yes, I am. Good, I'm Coach. Talking. Good, man. I'm um, glad to have you with us. Um, Levert um, and Xavier, are you guys there as well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, man. Good. Um, how's everybody doing tonight, man? How's everybody feeling? Uh, we have some some bad news for our listeners. Um, unfortunately, uh, the father of our TMBT pro head coach, uh, um, Bo Jones Jr., um, our head coach, um, his father passed um, this morning. Um, um, his father's name is Coach Bo Jones Sr., uh, who was one of my mentors and uh, very influential in the landscape of high school basketball here in the city um, where I grew up in Richmond, Virginia. I'm a very legendary man, um, um, loved by many. And so we want to send our condolences and positive energy out to the Jones family. Um, and uh, just uh, we'll be um, dedicating this podcast to Coach Jones. Um, I would like for this, uh, these three young men that we have on tonight, um, um, they both were with Coach Jones in Miami, and I would like to dedicate this and to send some love out to the Jones family. Um, um, Coach Donovan Carter, um, once again, we're blessed, brother. Um, you and I started talking about uh, this plan to have our – camp, um, our TMBT, a uh, Miami camp, I think Facebook says that you and I started talking about it in 2018. And um, um, with God's grace, uh, on um, April 25th, we were able to have that camp in Miami, and um, it was a huge success. And I want to thank you, Coach Carter, um, the, the brainstorming and the 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 talking and the hours of planning and the whiteboard and um, all that stuff, it seems to have paid off, um, Coach Carter. So I want to start with you. I want to say thank you, but I want to get the um, opinion from someone who was there from birth. So I would love for you to talk about your um, opinion of the event. Um, blessed to have these two young men. Um, Xavier Fletcher drove from Michigan. LeVert Bristol drove from Alabama. Um, Coach Donovan Carter, if you will, um, Talk to us a little bit about uh, your your genius methods and your ways that you went about um, putting this together for uh, for our TMBT Miami. Right. Um, I'm very thankful to help uh, represent the TMBT brand. Uh, it was obviously it was established without me, so all credit goes to Mr. Bell and his wife for trusting in me because that's very hard to find people that you can grow with and trust with and, and find chemistry with very quickly and it be genuine. So I want to say thank you for that, first and foremost. And um, when it comes to my methods, my methods come from just being around NBA families and having that luck of being around NBA families. Um, growing up with people like uh, Billy Thompson, um, who used to play for the Lakers and the Miami Heat in 1988. They moved to my hometown, and uh, he really, like, raised me. I grew up with his family. He would take me to games and have me around him all the time and flights and trips and everything. And I think that's where some of that itch came from, of playing the game of basketball, because, uh, you know, you don't have a dad in the house, in the house, and when your mom is at your friend's house, you, you take your friend's dad, and now they become your, your play dad, and, and that's how you get influenced, the positive influence where you actually see somebody turning their dream into reality. Um, when it comes to the event, I think it was a great practice run. And I think that it, it's our job to do right by Mr. Bell, who uh, finances and, and provides an infrastructure for such an event and giving us credible people and uniting those credible people so that when coaches come to the next event that we're more than willing and ready to fulfill the needs of these teams and coaches. Um, when it comes to my background, 
I am a co-valedictorian for FIU um, in business and marketing, and I also have a certification in uh, analytics. Um, I do independent events all the time. I do them in, as an independent, as a collaborator, and as a um, an outsourced party and company. Um, I've done events with the likes of Terrell Owens, Glenn Rice, Melvin Johnson, William Eddy. I'm also a brand ambassador for Trelon Champagne, which is, I'm only for Florida, obviously, and I've worked directly with the Isaiah Thomas family. Um, I'm really appreciative of what power that they give me and influence that they help me most. The, way, the reason why I say it like that is because you're not going to get in that space unless you have an MBA job, an MBA pedigree, or you're attached to a family. And that's how a lot of these things happen. Obviously, there's a lot of trust, luck involved, but there's also a lot of competition. A lot of people underestimate the sheer numbers of competition. But where people like me can carve out a beautiful life for themselves as an independent, create a secondary or passive income, in some case both, because the word of mouth brings you more clients. And what I'm happy with most, most in part is that Mr. Bell helped extend that access to the international links. Countries like Argentina, Brazil, uh, Venezuela, Colombia are very heavily influenced in the Miami area. And to have a person uh, like Mr. Bell backing me now gives me a whole new dimension through a client such as Melvin Johnson that introduced me to him. Mm -hmm. So now the players understand how that works. That That's almost like a family mentality. Yes, people throw that word around too loosely. I do admit, I, I admit that. But what I respect most of all is the people that either have a basketball skill set to start a movement like that, culturally, socially, or economically, or people that know their roles around that and able to provide a skill set to help that person either maximize what they're doing or take care of the family so that they maintain their footing. Mm. Is that good? Yes, sir, coach. Uh, okay. Thank you, coach. I'm, I'm honored. Uh, I'm honored um, by your words. Of course, um, um, people will never uh, understand the, the brainstorming, the sessions, the time that we put in the, uh, the calling and, and, uh, hey, but in your city, like you said, you are born and raised in Miami. Um, um, Liberty City. So uh, it was important that um, I don't think we could have not done it, Coach. Um, um, just to be honest, uh, with the um, amount of preparation that you and I put in, uh, it would not have made sense not to do it um, because we talked so much about it. Pandemic set us back, boom. Uh, overseas is not, uh, we can't travel. So it was um, we did have a few setbacks. I would be lying if I said that we didn't, but I'm glad to have <clears throat> um, young men um, like LeVert Bristol, um, Xavier Fletcher, uh, PJ Austin, uh, Carl Armstrong, some more guys that was there. Uh, we'll go to the uh, the elder statesman. Um, I think LeVert Bristol has been a client a little bit longer. Um, LeVert, we'll start off with you. Um, I know you drove in from Dalton, Alabama to Miami, Florida. Um, take us through your trip. Um, our listeners, take them through your trip. Um, what you did to get ready for your uh, your event, and uh, clearly, uh, you clearly did something correctly because um, you had a great showing at the event. Um, take us with you back. Um, go back a couple weeks and talk to us about your preparation and and, and what you did physically, um, as well as mentally, if you will. Uh, I mean, it's it very simple, man. I have my trainer down here in uh, Dothan, Alabama, with me, Stephen Cunningham. He's also a professional. He played basketball up in uh, Albany, New York, for the Albany Patroons, where they won a championship. So, 
Yeah, he's got a great resume. I started training with him in January, actually. So I've kind of been at it as far as in the weight room and uh, the basketball gym. And work out, I normally work out probably about three to four days, days out the week, including the weekends. We'll just get some shots up and go over a couple of stuff, though. But it was uh, actually a good trip going to Miami. I left that Saturday. I believe it was about nine, nine and a half hours from Alabama to Miami. But we actually stayed at Hollywood, Florida. And it was just, you know, great vibes. I got to see my grandmother. She's in uh, West Palm Beach. So kind of uh, took it as a road trip, you know, but at the same time, it's business also. But I had a great time, man, up until the event on that Sunday. Had some uh, bros at TMP. And uh, it was just another great vibes, man. Uh, had a good workout. Had a good two-hour, three-hour workout. And uh, Coach Bo, you know, put in a uh, good plays for us on the proper set and all that. So, I mean, it was pretty good, pretty much good rounds. So, the atmosphere was good. I loved it, man. Uh, I'm just, you know, around some great people. And uh, the energy was everything. So, I definitely enjoyed myself. It was a good trip coming from, uh, you know, small town Alabama. Well, you know, um, like you and I always say, uh, you're going to get out of basketball what you put into it. So, uh, clearly, uh, you you were prepared. Um, I think both of you guys were prepared. Um, Xavier Fletcher, um, you drove in from Michigan. Um, I think you said, what, 12 hours maybe, uh, 13 hours? Um, I know you had your family with you. Uh, um, one of our newer clients uh, came aboard um, um, right before the event and uh, was able to bring his family out and um, enjoy some of the Florida sun with us, the fellowship. Um, Xavier Fletcher, talk to us a little bit. Um, take us through your process to get ready to come to um, our TNBT Miami event. Um, um, take us back a couple weeks on what you did mentally. Um, I know you were playing professionally uh, in Michigan. Um, talk to us about your mental um, as well as your physical preparation and your routine um, to get ready for Miami, my brother. Um, all right, well, thanks for having me, having me tonight. Um, I would say... Mentally, though, it was a little bit longer drive than that. It was 22 hours there and 22, 30 right. hours back. Right. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. I think LeVert uh, was but, eight, eight or ten hours. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, to prepare mentally, um, really, I just stay focused on my season that I have going on here. I mean, that I think going day by day really helped me just staying focused on what I had going on each day building up to the event. Um, didn't really look too far forward, but I stayed focused on what I had already planned um, each day. Uh, as driving down there, trying to stay focused while staying focused on the road and whatnot, because we ended up not stopping. We drove all the way down, so driving through the night and whatnot, we drove in five over shifts, and I just stayed focused on making it down there, first of all. <laughs> um, but really, I was just planning what I had to do focus on to prepare uh, for what was to come. I mean, I was told to be ready for running, and, well, I definitely feel like I did that. It was well-conditioned to stay up and down the floor. It was a lot yeah. more so than what I'm used to, I guess you could say, uh, in a sense of playing it on the team that I'm on. Um, I mean, I beat guys up and down the court as it is here, so, like, trying to prepare more for that and then coming to guys that do just as hard as I go like it was a nice change of pace I guess you could say because I like competition I like a challenge I guess you could say so like it, like LaVert said the the energy all, all around was great um but to go backwards a little bit uh got down there and um I kind of used it as a vacation like with LaVert and we spent time, we went to Miami Beach uh, after the event to relax before we had the 30-hour trip back. But otherwise, I went golfing the day before, and that was something that my grandpa always had me do was just go out and hit golf balls or something. It's just peace and quiet. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really about yourself for that, So, and it's a lot of mental for that. So that's something I always did. Instead, I go for a run, and that was always just help mentally just stay focused. Nice, man. Nice. Uh, so if I'm understanding you guys correctly, as we know, uh, uh, most young guys, of course, we see the 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 videos and the 
uh, internet stuff about Miami, but um, it sounds like you guys um, took it more as a business trip. Um, Levert went to see his grandmother, uh, um, came down for the event, so he made it a family business trip. Sounds like you did the same thing. Um, it's a breath of fresh air for us, let me tell you, for guys to take it as seriously as you do, right? Because as we always say, uh, you're going to get out of pro basketball what you put into it. Of course, you're going to get out of your body what you put into it. And so not to say that you guys didn't have a beer or didn't have a glass of wine with family or what have you, but um, I didn't see you guys on the news uh, doing anything illegal or crazy. So to me, you didn't do too much in Miami. Um, I think when young people get into trouble, Coach Carter, um, like you and I talk about, is when you wind up on the news, which means you've been arrested and you wind up on the news, done too much. And young people have a way of going overboard when they come to Miami. Um, Coach Carter, I um, want to throw it back to you and um, talk a little bit about your native uh, Miami, Florida, uh, 305, and, and just talk about the landscape of Florida. I'm um, kind of give those... Uh, those listeners that have never been to Florida, kind of paint a picture, if you will, from the uh, perspective of someone who was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Right. So my my family moved down to Miami uh, during the World War II. Right. My my mom's side of the family is from uh, northern Florida and southern Georgia. My, my grandma's from Thomasville. And my grandfather was from um, Bradenton, Florida. And my dad's side of the family is from Guyana, which is a country in South America. And uh, the Caribbean culture clashes all the time in Miami because you have the dominant Bahamian culture and pockets of Miami and obviously the Cuban and Dominican communities. Um, though that diversity creates a very beautiful melting pot at times where you could see the blends of uh, Latin America, the African diaspora, the Caribbean diaspora, and uh, America turning into uh, modern America, right? Post-World War II. And during the 80s, the 80s was riddled with crime in Miami. We can all agree to that, right? um, The Times Magazine called it a paradise lost. Right. Um, one of the, my favorite documentaries on Miami is Cocaine Cowboys, I hate to say it, because it's like the real truth of Miami. But at the same time, Miami has, has really grown from the, the ashes of that by becoming a very high real estate um, international capital where they can easily redo the city every 10 to 15 years uh, because so many people have interest in the city. And without Miami's real estate market, Miami would be considered very undesirable. Um, I love, what I love about Miami is that core network of people that I'm associated with because in the 80s, that's when the high, the high time of basketball really occurred. Um, so you have people in the 80s like Melvin Johnson and um, his brother, um, uh, his name is Jason right now. Wow. Javin. Brother, I'm Javin Johnson. Javin. Mm-hmm. Javin Johnson. Javin was really close to a guy named Irv Thomas. Mm-hmm. Irv Thomas is like the secret guru of Miami that people don't talk about enough. To explain who he is in a nutshell, he's the head scout for the LA Lakers. Okay? And he's from Carroll City which is like a northern neighborhood in the north part of the town. And he's gotten a lot of talent for basketball around the nation to go to L.A. You know what I'm saying? So you have people like that who really um, understand the NBA who are all attached to a Melvin Johnson, right? And that's why we keep bringing him up because he's in the last dance with Michael Jordan, He's a legend in Argentina, and since it's just long enough from the 80s to now that people, only the older sets of people would know who he is, but I didn't even know that he went to my high school until like two, three years ago, 
and actually had to walk into my own high school and he has the scoring title trophy there that's broken, but it's still there. So it's like to see that full circle from high school being a backup point guard in high school and seeing the team, our team that year go 27 and 7, thinking that we're hot and one of the old coaches telling us like, we really haven't done nothing yet because of uh, Melvin and his friend from high school, they have put those scoring records, um, they put them to shame basically. You know what I'm saying? So it was him and a guy named Emery Atkinson. I don't know if you know him, um, Mr. Bell. Do you know Mr. Emery Atkinson? I don't think so, Coach. No, um, I don't okay. think so. Emery Atkinson is important because he was with Mel in high school. And he went to Miami Dade High School. This is Miami trivia for the podcast. He went 31 and 1 at Miami Dade. The first and last time they had a record like that. He yeah. was the 1982 Juco All All American. And they lost the game, the championship game to Spud Webb. Hmm. The Spud Webb in 1982. Wow. Wow. So you have a, a lot of pockets of the North Side pocket. It, it's like a hugely responsible for Melvin's close friends because they all grew up together. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, if I use South Florida as a whole, I don't want to do that. We want to stay in Miami, right? Mm -hmm. So Miami, I would say you can't talk about Miami without Miami the Udani Tassums of the world, the Shaky Rodriguez's of the world, uh, even the Frank Martins of the world. Frank Martin was a coach at South Carolina, coach at Miami High. And I just want to put respect on people's names because I, I know that uh, Miami is real diverse. Um, Frank, Mar Frank Martin is um, has a, uh, I believe he, he's mixed with a, a couple of different um, things. And he is very influential because they won so many championships in Miami High. We were talking about one of the players that was there in the 80s, your friend, Mr. Bell. What's his name again? I can't remember his name. We talked about him the other day. Um, from Georgetown? No, the one that was at Miami High. He was a uh, um, played with these with these. Cesar Portillo. Yes, yes, yes. So the Latin community... In the 80s, when they migrated from Cuba, they really was really good at unity, staying together, um, putting basketball and their interpretation of basketball in, on the imprint of Miami, and was really successful in that. Um, in that time period, they were able to, to fashion their own dynasties in the high school ranks. Um, but the, the North Side was really uh, transitioning from white America to black black um america so you have people from my neighborhood of libby city and over town starting to move to uh the norland area the carroll city area um in the early 80s uh new suburbs were emerging that then became cities in their own right so that's where that miami gardens area is today the north miami beach area is today and the uh the north dade county is what they call it today and i think that miami that diversity in miami has changed the landscape but it also brings a huge opportunity for the fever market because you have the grindhouse of south florida but you also have the diversity of caribbean and latin america and that's where you see that that beautiful clash of social economics and, and basketball grindhouse come together and I think that that's the part we take advantage of as, as players is understanding that there's diversity here, but that also means that there's reps to climb with and on. You know what I'm saying? Right. So from Miami, you could play against a Jamaican national team player in a pickup game. Mm-hmm. 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 You could, the, the, the Jamaican national team player is playing against Tim Hardaway Jr. in the same summer league. Right. Now you can take all the bells and whistles and awards away and see who's going to who. Who's going to get the bucket? Who's right. going to get the stop? Right, right, right. That's when it gets interesting. And I'm not going to lie to you. Some of these guys are really connected. Like, you have guys who have moved down here 
and consolidated the market. And when they play in these summer league games, they got Norris Cole, uh, Mario Chalmers, M. Hardaway Jr., M. Adebayo, Dennis Parker Smith, all on the same team. You got to bring your A game. Right. Hey, Coach, that's, oh, that's the beautiful part about it. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the Miami Pro League that uh, you are um, the um, your brainchild for the summer for us. Um, talk, to, um, talk to us a little bit and explain to the listeners uh, about the Miami Pro League and uh, how we will uh, be involved in, in, from a community aspect, also from a company aspect. Yeah, so I... I was on the collaboration marketing team for the Miami Pro um, 2019. And the, my friend who's there, his name is Kyle, Kyle Davis, and his business partner is Devo. We call him Devo. And what they have done is they've really grown the market for the summer league basketball. Um, it wasn't as possible before. It was almost like a charity game before. You couldn't get everybody in, and if you did get them in, it had to be free, or people weren't showing up. You know what I'm saying? It's still free, but now you have the backing of a real marketing group. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Davis is, is famous for his, his stint with Bacardi, and he was one of the reps for Bacardi, and I believe endorsements and in spirit events. And um, we have a couple of major spirit markets down here. Moet Hennessy, of course, Bacardi is another one. And uh, recently he did an event with Ace of Spades before it got bought out. He did it with 50 cents. And that was right after the, the, um, the last Miami Pro. Mm -hmm. Kyle Davis, Kyle Davis has done a good job, and Gilo has done a great job of consolidating the Miami uh, cliques, so to speak. So the cliques, so to speak, are trainers and um, agents and um, well-connected influencers who could bring NBA talent to the to the league. And if you cannot bring NBA talent in, into the league, they have the right to refuse you because they're trying to grow their brand. If they're not going to, if they're going to allow you, you have to stack the team with underdogs, basically, right? You're forced to do it. If you don't have the NBA guy, you got to get the guy who you know can destroy that guy. He can't relax with that guy. He has to put on a good show, and he has to do it to the point that he doesn't turn it into a hood charity game. We already know what happens at the end of hood charity games, right? Right, right. So so I I like the event. I've I've always loved the event, even if I was a part of it. Because Kyle and Debo have always made it interesting. They have always up the ante every year. They have always brought new um startups um um Startups, brands, um, endorsements. They're endorsed by Nike. They get they get free jerseys from Nike every year. They get merch. They get um, start help startup brands get more visibility through live stream. When you get you know sixty seventy thousand people watching on a live stream, that's when you know you have momentum. Um, the one that we did, the one that I liked the most that year was Outrank Brand. The Outrank brand was a clothing company, and it was a, um, a, a RAV wear. It was a, a, a high-end sunglass line, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the sunglasses, they were really well put together. And you, the reason why they put it on is to give brands the opportunity to showcase themselves. Right. The players, in return, they support the the brands and startup brands, why they're there, they don't even ask for things in return. Uh, Jay Crowder was was great at that. Like, he didn't have to lift up the shirt and put on the photo. Yes, 
Yes or no, right? It, it didn't have to do that. Correct. He he did it at the goodness of his heart. He's up there pumping up the brands and stuff like that, putting us on and, and making sure that the Miami Pro is known for connecting the dots. And Colin Debo was masterful at that, man. Like I, I was really li- I was really, really loving that because you don't get a local event on channel news and attached to seventy people, seventy thousand people on a live stream and them not notice it. That's how you get James Harden and John Wall to walk in the room. Right, right. Wow. Because you gotta put so much hype on it because it's Miami, or you you'll you'll be drowned by all the all the hype, all the clout all the clout borrowers. Right. Right. The clout, the clout chasers, excuse me, the clout chasers. What do you guys do in Miami, Florida? Uh, what do you guys do in Miami for the traffic, Coach? I mean, traffic's everywhere, spring breakers. Uh, what do you guys do? Oh, man, now, right now, during the pandemic, I just stay home. I'm right. not even going to you, I stay home. Right. But uh, on an average day, like on a weekend, I love the fish. I, I love the fish with my friend. My friend Carlos has a boat, and we would go fishing on the boat sometimes. And um, also, we uh, go to parks to try to ride the bikes because you can get the little scooters and you can rent the scooters and you can go through the city and you can get through a lot of that traffic um, when you're in certain areas. You park, you know, you park in Wynwood, but you take the scooters from Wynwood to downtown. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you get the right bike, you'll charge it up and it'll make it it'll make it to downtown. Right. Wow. It it seems you know, it, mm-hmm. yeah and everybody loves it. I'm sure you you probably don't um, you probably don't you know I'm mean, you're used to it. But I'm sure when kids come in, um, you take a Levert Bristol uh, from Alabama or an Xavier Fletcher from Michigan. Um, I'm sure those kids uh, they uh, want to do more beach because they probably don't have beaches like that in their city. So I'm sure it's a um, it's a spiritual place. Um, 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 talk to me a little bit, um, Levert Bristol. Um, I heard you say you went down to spend some time with your grandmother. I'm um, talking about the positive energy um, that your family brings you. Uh, you were able to do both uh, family and business trip. Um, talk to us about um, what that meant to spend time with your grandmother during these um, pandemic times and to check in on her. Um, talk to us about um, how that recharged your batteries with, I'm assuming. Uh, I mean, it was just a good feeling, man. And anytime go down and see my grandmother, never seen her about, uh, I say about, about six months due to how far she lived and the whole pandemic. So just basically trying to keep her in the house, you know, keep her safe and whatnot from catching it. So uh, it was just a great experience, man. And uh, helped me uh, clear my head, you know, just get my mind right. Mm-hmm. Anytime I talk to my grandmother, get her good old wisdom and knowledge, you know. Hey. Always a uh, and so, uh, <clears throat> I just had to get my, you know, my right. And right. Yeah, man, I had a great time. Uh, wonderful experience. Right, man. Um, Xavier Fletcher, um, talk to us a little bit about your golfing and how you used uh, Miami as a spiritual trip, uh, also a business trip, but a positive energy trip. Um, uh, how you use it to recharge your batteries and to get back to your routine and to, um, to pick up your pace a little bit. Talk to us about. Uh, the spiritual part of your trip and um, the positive energy to spending time with your family and um, um, I'm catching some rays in Florida. Um, talk to us a little bit about the the spiritual, um, the mental, the spirituality part. Yeah, so the golf, the golf game comes with, I mean, really getting patient, I guess. So like this, teach me to slow down, not take things too fast, just enjoy everything that you have and really just take everything in. Um, I used to walk a lot of golf courses and so like doing that, like I guess that really helped me realize a lot of things with um, basketball because I mean that's been my number one love and passion for sport-wise anyway. Um, it's really helped me slow down and enjoy basketball and make it plays in that sense. I'm not going to lie, I kind of have to say it, but I did a really nasty Euro step, and Coach Bo will back this. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I thought I had a, a bucket, and I know a Levert just comes in back and just blocks it so nasty. <laughs> 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 I know he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Hey man, that's but, a um, good thing. That's a great thing. You know, it, it's a uh, um you playing in um you playing pro basketball in uh, Michigan. So I mean, wasn't like uh, you weren't used to the competition. Uh, what was yeah. the uh, what would you say um, that you learned the most from from just taking something back from uh, the concepts that we use at, at, at TMBT, the uh, you know the horns concept? What did you um, big cr- um, contrast between uh, what you guys are doing with your pro team? So I say this was was crazy is like we run the horn set. So like seeing that down there that really helped me know what Coach Bull wanted to see when he asked for it so it really helped me put two and two together but then he also helped me see things more clearly of um what i was saying before was just slowing down because he emphasized that a lot when we first started and just saying to slow down and see it more and i started to see things a little bit more clear that made it more easier this last weekend actually at my game (laughs) um it's, it's kind of funny uh but uh, we actually ended up winning and we're going to the championship this weekend, which is nice. But anyway, um, yeah, Coach Bo just helped us, um, I think, in my opinion, slow down and see the game easier um, with each set that he taught us. It was floppy set and horn set, which, like I said, I run the horn set with the team that I have now. And, yeah, it just helped out a lot this past weekend. Right. Good, man. That's uh, Hey, that's a good thing. We are, uh, this will be part one of our uh, um, TMBT Miami podcast. Uh, we have some more young men that will be joining us uh, for uh, parts two, three, and four. And so uh, we are right at 30 minutes. We've kept you guys, um, especially Coach Carter, we have kept him um, for a long time tonight. Um, what I would like for you guys to do uh, before we sign off, um, Levert Bristol, if you will, will share your social media handles so that I mean, if you have anyone that wants to uh, check in or you have young kids, um, we have um, our TMBT youth um, in Virginia and Las Vegas that may want to check in. Ask for routine tips. What do you do weight-wise? Um, um, what social media handle would you like to drop? Uh, y'all can um, follow me on Instagram at Vert Dog. That's the two Gs, 90. And uh, on Facebook, my first name is Levert Bristol. Okay. Um, how about you, Xavier? Uh, yeah, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. It's Saint Savage Two, like the actual number two. Um, and then if you want, I have a basketball page of myself on Facebook. You type it in. You'll either get my actual Facebook, and then there's a link that's connected to it that goes to my professional Facebook. Nice. Um, Coach Donovan Carter, uh, um, if you will, um, I know you've been on before. You've shared some, but for those uh, that are just tuning in, um, if you share um, one of your social media handles for those that have questions um, about um, uh, the genius things that you do. Yes, um, my Instagram page is my main page right now where I, I, I take the most care of, I want to say it like that, and that's uh, DWC Marketing, all one word, on Instagram. Perfect. Uh, our, the company um, Instagram, of course, is uh, the Milton Bell team. Um, we are on Twitter. Um, at the Milton Bell team, Facebook, um, TMBT Media Group, um, Milton Bell Basketball as well. Uh, Our email is milton.bell at miltonbellbasketball.com. Our um, um, company phone number is area code 702-908-1501. If you have any questions or questions, seeking guidance uh we can uh, hopefully help uh we have a lot of young men um levert and xavier our new clients so we're uh, honored man when you guys um come aboard and um bring your work ethic and you bring your a game um, to our events um uh, our film will be coming out this week so we are i'm um, excited to um push forward um, with our next event uh, on the 23rd uh, of may 
um, part two uh, in Miami, Florida. And I'm um, looking forward to um, to more success, Coach Carter. I'm um, looking forward to you leading us um, uh, with your vision and and your um, knowledge of the Florida area, South Florida. And I'm um, just looking to give back more to the community um, as well. I'm looking to establish some um, roots down um, with the youth of Florida as well, um, kind of like we do in Las Vegas and Virginia. And just very appreciative to have um, all three of you guys um, as a part of our family, and uh, honored that you would um, th um, that you guys would join our movement and um, understand which way we're going. And um, especially you players, you guys um, seek Coach Carter and I out for help. So we're appreciative to have serious young men that would uh, travel down and see it as a business and family trip. So we're appreciative. So. Um, for our TMBT uh, Media Miami podcast tonight, we'll be shutting it down. I um, want to say thank you to Levert Bristol, Xavier Fletcher, um, Coach Donovan Carter for joining us tonight. Uh, we look forward to part two uh, in Miami, uh, March 23rd, uh, May 23rd, sorry. Um, and looking forward to, to having more guys that um, take it seriously and becoming one. And we will be traveling the same group that you guys were in Miami is the same group that you will be traveling to Argentina. So look forward to talking to you guys more. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Um, good night. Thank you. Good night.